This is Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust you will consider this your vitamin and supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom and leave a rating and a brief written review. It will enable other wonderful people to be able to discover this podcast. I'm looking for the next level leader, someone who would like for me to come alongside and help and coach you, see if there's any possibility of us working together. Just go to drronblake.com forward slash call, drronblake.com forward slash call. Get on my calendar. I'll give you a call and we'll see if there's potential in working together. You know, life can really change quickly for any of us. This is the 275th episode of Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom. A year and a half ago, I didn't have any idea about starting a podcast, and here we are. There are interesting meetings and appointments along the way, and I thought I would just stop and just talk to you from my heart about I believe you can be a great leader, whether you're just leading in a volunteer capacity somewhere, leading your family, ultimately leading your leading yourself, and you can grow and stretch. And many of you have businesses, you're entrepreneurs, you have a position where you work, you're, you're a worker, an employee, but you can be the best leader. Have you ever stopped and just reflected on your story? I have begun to do something, and it has been so eye-opening. And that is, I listen to people's story. I have a story, but I I don't want to tell you um, uh, my story. I, I want to talk about you and your story. Just recently, I was with a group of people, and it was a group of people that are colleagues, and and I know them fairly well. But over the mill with social distancing precautions, I had one of the gentlemen begin to just tell us about some events from his childhood. He had us all totally captivated. He told the harrowing story of a child in a very explosive situation with a step-parent and how he um, got out of that situation and told a little bit more about his life. And I have to say that by listening to his story, it gave me a greater appreciation for who he is, where he's come from, and even more importantly, what he's overcome. Every leader, every person you meet has a story. Do you ever stop and ask someone, tell me your story? Most of us, myself included, have spent most of our lives trying to talk about ourselves. I I challenge you today, as a leader, to ask other people for their story. Now, your story must be not your residence, but your reference. I meet far too many people who their past and all of the things that happened to them in their life up to this point is still their residence. They're still living in the middle of it. They're living in the middle of the discouragement and defeat and the dysfunction. It's your reference point. It's not your residence. It's your reference to what changes have happened in your life. You may be a person of faith, and to be a person of faith is to have our story transformed and changed. Regardless of what your story is, regardless of the who done you wrong song, you can be changed. And you can use your story and how you've been able to get past it, how you've been able to move on, Your story can be your springboard into a future. I want you to try the same experiment I've been trying for the last month, and that is 
when I have an encounter with people, even people I'm acquainted with, like last week, that gentleman who I've known for years, but had never heard that part of his story. I am asking people, tell me something about your story that I don't know, and you will always be surprised. You will notice that mostly folks tell stories. They don't give you a litany, a resume, a, a linear kind of a conversation. It is stories that transformed their lives, stories that make them who they are. And here's the other thing. I, I got three or four things that I want to um, remind you of. One of those is no matter how bad it may be where you are and where you were, there seems to always be someone offering a lifeline if we'll get our eyes off of what's wrong, what we don't have, how much we lack, and we begin to look for the people who come along and help us. I'm putting the finishing touches on a book that I'm going to write about leadership lessons that I learned from my grandmother. And it became apparent to me as I was writing it that she was that life preserver. She was that lifeline that had been given to me. She nurtured me. She encouraged me. She believed in me. She told great stories. And she continually told me that she believed in me and that I was going to make it. She would not allow me to make excuses, to sit and cry and complain about all of the things that were wrong. She believed in me. What I have noticed as I'm listening to the stories, and I'm listening very closely the last few weeks, is that there always was some significant person who came alongside. For some of us, it wasn't a relative. It may have been a friend, a neighbor. For lots of people, it was a school teacher or a principal or a coach. Sometimes it was a pastor. It was a Sunday school teacher, a next door neighbor, someone who even unbeknownst to you at the time took you under their wing and believed in you. And, and here's what I'm seeing. There was someone who did that for me. I ask you, my leadership friend, who are you pouring your life into? Who is the man or woman or the young person that you have come into their life for such a time as this, that you can be that strong influence, that you can be that one who helps give them a hand up, one who says, I'm going to do for you what was done for me. I'm wondering how much better our world would be leaders if those of us who have been helped would reach out to help others, to mentor, to coach. When I was young, I'd never heard the word mentoring or coaching, but I had so many significant people all along the way who, who spoke into my life, who believed in me. It happened from when I was a child. It happened in the school system. Another thing I'm hearing in the stories of people is I'm hearing also stories of discouragement, stories of cursing, stories of people belittling people, and some folks to this day have never gotten over it. Here's what I want to do. I want to throw another lifeline to you and say you can get over it. Yes, it was bad. Yes, it was awful, my leadership friend. But don't careen through life trying to prove yourself, trying to prove that mom or dad or the school teacher or the coach was wrong. Here's what you need to know, leader. Everyone has an excuse. What are you going to do with it? Yes, we've all had setbacks. Yes, we've all had things happen to us that we wish we had not had happen. Everyone has an excuse, but now it's time to roll up your sleeves, to get better, to get over it, to move ahead, and to move on. 
There are so many leadership lessons that I have learned down through the years, but the one that I'm reflecting on in these days that has really made a significant difference is if you'll just change your day today, you have the potential to change the rest of your life. Everybody wants to change their life. They want this to happen. They want to get the new job. They want to be an entrepreneur. They want to have wealth, and on it goes. Well, it's not just going to fall in your lap. You have to begin to change your day. By that, I mean build some routines into your day. If you need to get in better health, um, the best time to have done that was some time ago. The second best time, as you know, is right now today. If you want to get healthy, put on your put on your workout clothes and go walk around the block. But start doing it today. For what happens is we all want to do something. We all imagine something's going to happen. And one day I'm going to get around to it. And someday it's going to happen. But the days are slipping through our fingers. If you want to change your future and you want your life to be better than it is now, don't focus on that. Focus on doing the things you need to do today. I, I have little habits that I have instituted into my life. There are some things that I wanted to change. If you need to get out of debt, then you need to change your day to day by paying down your debt. If you need to save for retirement, just make up your mind. I'm going to start saving 1% of my salary and put it into a, an IRA or, or a 401k, whatever it would be. But it's not going to just happen until you begin to change some of your habits. You make enough significant changes in your day. You will wake up in a week, a month, a year, two years, five years, ten years, and you will be utterly amazed at the life you have because of things you did in your life today. I meet people all the time who say I don't like to read, but with Audible and electronic e-readers, read. Go ahead and turn your TV off. You've already heard all of it. And just make up your idea that you are going, make up your mind, you're going to make the changes that you need to make in your life. Because if you change your day, you will eventually change your life. And then I want to end like I started. Leaders, I think we need to become talent scouts. We need to multiply ourselves. We need to be looking for the people out there that we are going to pour our lives into. This past uh, Saturday, I was in a business meeting several miles away from home. I got home and sat in my chair where I was going to take a little bit of a power nap, and I had my phone there by me. The phone rang and I, it said wireless caller from a particular town in the northern part of the state where I live. Actually, it's the town that I was born in. I normally do not answer the phone if I do not know who it's calling, but I felt some reason, maybe it was the sleep in my eyes, but I, I slid my cell phone across and I said hello. And the person, the raspy voice on the other side said, Aster, do you know who this is? And I said, I, I don't know who this is. He described, though I have not seen him in uh, 29 years. And he said, do you remember how you met me? And I do remember how I met him. I met him in a county jail. And he was facing some serious uh, time in prison. And somebody there uh, had attended the church where I was at that time and gave him my number and he called and I went to see him. And he had never been to church. He'd never been a person of faith. And he was a young man, and he was in a difficult place. I took a Bible along with him and talked with him and visited with him. And we prayed a prayer. And there that afternoon, he read back to me what I had written to him that day and the transformation and change that came in his life. And here, 29 years later, he called and we reconnected. I went out that evening after I talked with him and took down his phone number and told him we would we would reconnect. I was with a group of folks on Saturday evening for a meal and recounted this story and somebody said, how did he get your phone number? And I said, I have no idea. But here's what I do know. 
Since I have been listening to people's stories closely and thinking someone helped me in the middle of my story to have it transformed and changed, I received a call from someone who I was in relationship with 30 plus years ago. Here's what I'm saying to you. There's someone today, leader, who needs you and needs your influence. This has been a different sort of a Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, and that is I want you to not only know your story, I want you to listen to the stories of others. I want you to quit making excuses and do all that you've been made to do, and just start small if you need to. Change what you do today, and you'll change your life. But above all else, let's multiply our influence, and let's put on eyes that see folks that we need to come alongside and help. That's what leaders do. You've been listening to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I hope this has been a vitamin and a supplement for your mind and heart. Wherever you receive podcasts, would you please leave a rating or review? It would be so helpful enabling other great people like you to be able to locate this podcast. If you'd like to get on my calendar to see if there's any possibility of me coming alongside and help you, go to drronblake.com forward slash call, drronblake forward slash call. Get on my calendar and I'll call you and we'll see what the possibilities are. Remember, my leadership friend, you are doing better than you think you are. You really are. And until next time, this is Dr. Ron saying have a great and blessed day. 